right now the second tool that we talk about is a robo help a uh, tool uh, now robo help basically is uh, for the online uh, help content so you would have seen those help uh, files on the internet right uh, wherever when you open any website there is a online help available right so uh, that that is created by this tool that's called uh, so earlier it was macro media robo help now it is by the name of uh, adobe so you will find this tool and there are certain features uh, that help here right so basically this robo help tool is used for the online help system and uh, there are certain features which are more like uh, ms word only but then uh, the interface is different so you can see in the picture this is how it looks once you click on create it will create a new project and then you can start working on it so there are certain uh, uh, <clears throat> functions like uh, you have project you have edit you have insert so all that is available and then you can put your content and publish the file so that's how this uh, robo help works so normally the file uh, extension is .xpj that's the uh, uh, extension that we use for any robo help workspace uh, and these are certain uh, uh, functions that we are using for content for property so this is how the files are prepared and then you can probably use them now the other tool is frame maker again an advanced tool for the technical uh, writing uh, we will be discussing it in detail when we will uh, discuss about the uh, structured content so uh, once we are done with the uh, word and other tools these are some advanced tools that are there so we'll discuss them uh, just you should know again i have also sent you the tutorial for this tool as well uh, but what it does uh, the major function of a frame maker is it has both facilities you can use unstructured content also and structured also so what entirely is unstructured and structured that we will understand in the coming sessions uh, right now you can just understand that this is one of the tools that we use in technical writing and basically it has some xml based coding inside it uh, that we need to do so it's not mandatory that you should know but nowadays uh, technical writing uh, uh, requires i mean if you are uh, you know into a certification so uh, they ask you that if you know any of these tools so like frame maker uh, then we have xml oxygen editor so all these are advanced tools for structured content i hope we are getting at least a little bit idea of what it is uh, so this is how it works uh, these are the different uh, tabs that you will find uh, same as ms word so we have a lot of them like file edit element so once you start working on them uh, you understand all these things better so i will uh, discuss this uh, once we are done with the uh, okay now next tool that we talk about is the powerpoint okay so let's see how powerpoint works the basic things i hope everyone knows but then we'll see it uh, from the beginning so i hope this screen is visible which is powerpoint the first screen ppt so the first uh, 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 screen that you get you can open to a blank presentation and this slide that you see is called a title slide okay so the very first slide that you put in your uh, any of the project is your title slide now you can change the layouts there are so many layouts available can you see there is a title slide then there is a title and content then there are two content comparison so these are all different types of layouts available so whenever you want you can also change the present layout to the other one but uh, uh, by default the first one is the title slide because anyways we are starting the project here right so remember the title page that we use in our reports and case study so this is the same thing here you can put your uh, title uh, suppose we are saying a case study on so and so so that can be title and in the subtitle you can probably write prepared by and then your name your company name date version all that thing can be given here in the title slide right now next slide would be so if you want to insert a new slide you will go on new slide and then you uh, i mean insert it now next slide probably is the content slide so content means the table of content remember the table of content that we have created i hope we remember how we created in ms word so under references we will find table of content insert figures uh, insert end note footnote all that you can find okay so uh, this is the content slide wherein you will write all the headings that you want so suppose you want an introduction slide then you want to put uh, so so when you are writing you are putting a powerpoint presentation we do not cover the entire report what we do we just cover the major points right so for example in the report you had introduction 
something called as uh, problems then you had their solutions the benefits right and finally the conclusion so these are the major headings that we can put here so we don't want to you know make our presentation very lengthy so uh, at the most you can keep 10 slides uh, and then uh, on i mean uh, first on this slide you will have to give all the major topics that you will cover here i hope this is clear huh? so for example the first one i want to keep as introduction uh, then uh, so on so second one i want the problems based uh, for the pandemic uh, then i want to give the uh, solutions right so all those headings i can mention here uh, the benefits your headings will put here right and then accordingly again new slides will be inserted so now what do you think technically which will be the next slide what will what it will say now once you put the introduction slide now whatever you will write here will not be in the form of a paragraph so suppose in the um, in, in in the para, i mean in the word document we used a lot of paragraphs because in presentation it's more about you presenting in front of the audience right so we keep minimum text and maximum pictures so the ratio that we maintain for powerpoint is like 10 is to 40 it says that uh, you know if you are making uh, 10 slides maximum words that should be there are 40 so you can understand what is i mean it's a very very i mean few words that you have to put there uh, but this is an ideal situation uh, i mean uh, we, we in fact we are not able to put 40 words uh, it it becomes more than that but we should try to be near about that huh? so uh, the idea is that we should have more graphics rather than text because people do not like it the audience where you are presenting it they would not like uh, slides which has a lot of text right so you should probably have some bullet points plus some pictures that you can put by picture i mean the graphs that you have used also graphics correct the by the the pie charts that you have used right or the table of uh, that the table comparative table maybe you have made so all those things can be shown here i hope we are getting the idea how to prepare the presentation so uh, this is one now so so we have understood how we will insert now if you want to change the design then these are this is the place you click on design very similar to your word document uh, you can uh, change to any of the designs or you can use uh, some company template as well so suppose you are working with the, so you would have seen the ppt that i show you there is a template that is used wherein we have the company logo uh, right we see henry haven written there so that is the template that company has provided for preparing the ppt so that is something which you can also use uh, when the template will be there with you, then you can make, uh, otherwise, if you are making a general PPT, then you can use any of these slides. Normally for the formal presentation, we try to keep a design, which is not very, you know, uh, vibrant and, uh, you know, it, it should look, it should give a formal look. I hope we are getting the idea. Okay. So this is uh, one, uh, the design thing. Uh, then here also we have the insert tab. You can insert any pictures, tables, uh, one thing which is different here is inserting an audio or a video. So suppose you have a video, uh, uh, a video tutorial that you want to keep in between. So what you can do, you can say insert video and then it will ask you which video and then you can put the link in all. So when you will run your PPT, that video will automatically be played. Okay. Uh, likewise, we can also put an audio note, right? So sometimes people want that uh, an automated voice should come when that slide is there. So you can actually put that audio and uh, when you click on that, mic symbol uh, it will uh, start speaking whatever the audio note is there right so very interesting features uh, we can use in uh, ppt to uh, make people understand our content right so these are certain things the rest things are same as our word document uh, then if i talk about draw so again we are talking about the shapes and all design i have already told you transition is uh, one thing which is important the way you want your text to come so for example there are six bullet points and you want every bullet point you know uh, it's not that all the bullet points should come uh, at one go you want each and every point to come one by one so uh, all that features can be uh, selected from transition so this shows how your text will uh, yeah. uh, so how it, how it is still there on the screen 
correct 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 so you can use any of them again for a formal presentation uh, what we suggest is that you should not use a lot of graphics a lot of animations right otherwise uh, it it is not very interesting to the audience it loses interest huh? so sometimes you know that flying uh, transition has been put and then uh, i mean there is a lot of disturbance when you are reading the content so that should not be there you should keep uh, the one which is more uh, stable right so that is tra about transition now in transition you can have two things either you can select it on mouse click that will be manual so when you run the slide uh, it you know only when you will click then only it will work otherwise you can keep the automatic transition as well that after let's say 30 seconds your slide should change so that timer also you can keep normally we keep it on mouse click why because you know when you are presenting the data you you don't you do not know how much time it will take might be people ask you some questions so uh, it's not good that your ppt is just moving around and then you are on slide number 4 and the ppt is on slide 10 so that does that that doesn't map right so that's why uh, normally we keep it on mouse click and uh, we work on it so all that is there otherwise you can also put the sound effects if you want and uh, on particular slides also or you can say apply to all also so all these features are available here that you can use uh, animation that i was telling you this is about transition and animation uh, same as uh, the one that we have talked about slide show means uh, when you you know we also have a kind of a cup that you see here is it visible people it says slide show so you can also do uh, this one or you have a uh, shortcut key what's the shortcut key to run the ppt it's Five. Huh? If you press your function key F five, uh, it will show you the slide show. Okay. All right. So uh, this could be from uh, if you want the slide show to run from particular slide, you can use Shift F five, Shift key plus F five. If you want it to run from the beginning, then it will be F five. Or otherwise, you can use this cup as well to run the slides. There is the record option wherein you can have a screen recording. Again, you can also record your audio and put it here. right so all this is available uh, in this uh, then we have something called as review now again your ppts can also be reviewed so you can put the comments right so same as what we have discussed earlier right uh, have i discussed with you the compare feature people i think i have right how to compare so that feature yeah. can be used so all these features are same as the word document and then you have the view point wherein you can have outline view uh, you know uh, normally you want to see all these slides on one screen so you can put this slide sort of notes page right so all this can be used here uh, for your viewing so uh, normally people want to take print out of ppt so this is the way they do it they put it uh, they put the entire screen and then they put it in the slide sort of so that from here you can actually shift your uh, slides here and there right so you were able to see it on the single screen and then you can uh, hover here and there okay so all this is available now when you will be making your ppts uh, you can just uh, try uh, to use uh, normal features that we have discussed and try to prepare it all right on the uh, front screen you will also find the themes so you can also use one of the themes can you see here is it visible on the screen people yeah so see there are so many themes available that is the first uh, title slide is available now this is also one of the ways to use the already existing templates and all so uh, you can do that also right so this is all about ppt uh, i hope now we are clear enough we can make the ppt yeah so actually see presentation is all about presenting the information right so uh, ppt should not have a lot of text but yes the way you will present it would matter a lot right so uh, that's how the ppt works okay now the next tool that we have is ms visio this is microsoft visio now normally when you put the flow charts and the organizational charts yeah so uh, this is a special diagramming tool so what it does it allows you to make automated flow charts so the 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 shapes and all are available on this tool you just have to drag them and you can make complex flow charts using this tool 
so it's a very interesting tool suppose you are making some flow charts or uh, you know some diagrams uh, where you need you know uh, otherwise you will have, you will have to select the shapes in the ms word it is a little difficult here everything is automated so you can just drag them and make them so see this is the first screen that you see on the visual see all the shapes are available you just have to drag them and start preparing it this is the interface that you will see i hope it is visible huh? all these tags are available to insert to make files so basically you use this tool only when you are into a lot of graphic designing huh? a lot of uh, diagrams that you have to make so then you will use this tool okay so this was one uh, that we discussed visio then there is one more tool called snagit uh, i hope you would have heard of this huh? a very common tool this is for the screenshots so normally what happens is uh, whatever youtube videos you see and you would have seen uh, people showing all those uh, links where in the arrow is going and then you know this is the place where you should have to click so all that animation and all that that you see uh, they use these tools so basically snagit takes a screenshot of and there are certain features available which you can use uh, for capturing the screen so suppose you want to show the uh, how this zoom meeting works so that whole snagit will uh, give you this option of recording the every, uh, recording every step so at at some step you can pause it again uh, click it so that entire video can be made so normally the tutorials and all are made using this tool okay so this is again uh, you can use them uh, for different features like we use for uh, inserting the pictures we also use for uh, preparing the tutorial videos so you can actually use that snagit for a picture and then the content can be made in other tools like ms word and so these were the tools now there is one more photoshop you people would have heard of huh? a lot of uh, photo studios and all they use photoshop for uh, uh, adjusting the images and uh, making changes you know that those memes that you see all those are the magic of photoshop right so you can create a picture and then you can put some other's face on it on all that uh, creativity that you do for the images is done by photoshop again a uh, helping tool i mean a supporting tool for a technical writer not a main tool so that's why we don't go into this because uh, normally you use ms word only as a technical writer the first strongest tool that you use is ms word or powerpoint the other tools are just for uh, a supporting feature for example if you want to go for uh, snagit so it will not help you in uh, creating the content however it will help you for the uh, capturing thing right uh, again for the flow chart and all you can use visio and then uh, probably with visio you can use your ms word so these are all supporting tools that we are using <music>